the movie begins with a young boy, Omri, who is being picked up by his mother Jane from school. They return home to celebrate his ninth birthday, with his friends and family present there. Omri receives several gifts, such as a skateboard, a set of toys, and so on. In particular, he gets an old cupboard from his brother Gillen. Gillen also found it somewhere, so he doesn't have the keys to the cupboard. But Jane has a lot of keys at her disposal, and she believes one of them might work. Following this, Omri decides to go to the skate park to play and takes his best friend Patrick along. The latter gives him a little Native American figure made up of plastic as a birthday gift, as he couldn't afford anything more. Later that evening, Omri goes through his mom's box of old keys and starts trying each of them to unlock the cupboard. Eventually, he finds a golden colored one that actually fits the cupboard's keyhole. His mother tells him that this golden key was handed over to her by her grandmother before her death. From that point onwards, she developed the hobby of collecting the keys. Despite unlocking the cupboard, Omri has nothing to store inside of it, so his mother suggests that he keep his new figurine. The following morning, Omri is awakened by a light tapping sound coming from the cupboard. As he approaches it, the key suddenly pops out from inside. He picks it up and opens the cupboard, only to find the Indian figurine that has magically come to life. Fascinated, Omri tries to touch the tiny man, but the latter perceives him as a threat and pricks his finger with a dagger. This part scared me when I was three years old. He further addresses Omri as a demon and a giant. But before the two can communicate, Omri's father Victor summons him to get ready for school. The boy then quickly locks up the cupboard to keep it a secret from everyone. Later, at school, Omri tells Patrick that the figurine he gifted was awesome and that he loved it. He then waits anxiously for the school day to end. As soon as he arrives home, he rushes straight to his room, but much to his dismay, the Indian has reverted to his original plastic form. But that night, Omri overhears the tapping sound one more time. Overjoyed, he rushes to open the cupboard and finds the tiny man alive again. Although initially frightened, the man introduces himself as Little Bear, an 18th century Iroquois from the Wolf Clan. He assumes that Omri is a great spirit called the Peacemaker in a child's form. As the two go on conversing, they quickly form a friendship. Little Bear explains that he learned English in 1761 when he was fighting in the French and Indian War on the side of the British. Omri then picks him up in his hand and brings him out of the cupboard. Shortly after, he gets a plastic teepee for the tiny man to sleep in, but the latter is unsure of the strange material that it's made from. As a result, Omri puts the teepee in the cupboard, transforming it into a real miniature dwelling. Later that night, the boy decides to test the capabilities of the magical cupboard. He goes to get lots of Barbie dolls. <laughs> he gathers all of his favorite toys and puts them inside. Much to Omri's horror, the toys immediately come to life and begin fighting one another. So, he hastily locks the cupboard and reverts them back to their original form before retiring to bed. The next morning, Little Bear wakes up Omri, and the duo engage in some more conversation. The tiny warrior reveals that after his wife's passing, he has started living alone. Just then, he senses a breeze and expresses his desire to venture outside. The boy carefully takes him out into the yard, and Little Bear thinks that it is his homeland. Omri then goes to grab some of his father's tools and a tray of mud so that Little Bear can build his own house in it. Unfortunately, Little Bear is soon attacked by a pigeon. Look out, Omri. It is the shit birds of the wind, prompting the boy to rush him back to his room. But the little man has already been injured. This worries Omri, and he fears that his tiny friend won't make it. But then, a brilliant idea strikes his mind. He quickly sneaks into his brother's room and steals a model set of a First World War British Army. He then chooses a medic figure named Tommy and puts it inside the cupboard, bringing it to life. Despite being bewildered, Tommy does his duty and patches up Little Bear's wound. Once the job is done, Omri puts the medic back into the cupboard, transforming him back to a toy. Poor Tommy. Before leaving for school, Omri provides Little Bear with everything he needs to build his house. To get an axe, he puts a knight figurine in the cupboard, steals his weapon, and reverts him back. Later at school, a teacher assigns the students to read out the stories they've written as homework. In Omri's turn, he talks about how he is fascinated with an Indian in his cupboard. The teacher praises his imagination, even though it's a little racist, while Patrick looks at him curiously. After class, Omri goes to a room where all the class projects are stored. He then trades one of his toys with a chieftain figure. Upon arriving back home, Omri discovers that Little Bear has crafted his house on the mud tray. The boy surprises him with the chieftain figurine, saying that he can have his longbow. This time, Little Bear decides to watch the magic, so he stands next to the cupboard in excitement. Omri then brings the chieftain to life and snags his bow, but before he can transform him back to the toy version, the old chieftain begins shaking and soon dies of a heart attack. Omri freaks out as he has never seen someone die and believes 
that he killed him. Seeing this, Little Bear wonders why a great spirit would be so frightened at the sight of death. He soon comes to the realization that Omri is just a child and not a spirit. He then suggests that the boy send the chieftain back to his original place. Heeding to his suggestion, Omri locks the dead chieftain in the cupboard, transforming him back to plastic. But before he can take it away, his father calls him, prompting him to head downstairs. Omri, it's time for dinner. Time to stop murdering Native Americans. Dad is upset as he can't find his saw blades. In order to hide the truth, Omri lies that he buried them and can't remember where. This enrages Dad, but he doesn't want to punish the boy. He understands that before iPads, all kids had to do was bury saw blades in the yard. So he simply hands him some money, instructing him to buy another set. In the next scene, Omri is seen exiting the hardware store when a bully pushes him against the wall and steals his change. This leaves him distressed and he feels like he's a loser. After a while, as he is sitting by the road, Patrick shows up with a plastic cowboy on a horse that can go with the Indian. Meanwhile, at home, Little Bear prepares the chieftain's body for burial. Sometime later, Omri brings Patrick to his home. As they walk towards the room, they find his brothers looking at Little Bear's house. Omri immediately asks his brothers to leave, after which he starts searching for Little Bear. He locates the tiny man hiding under the table and introduces him to Patrick. Shocked, Patrick wonders how the toy came to life, to which Omri discloses the secret about his magical cupboard. Just then, his father calls him to ask for the saw blades. Before he leaves, Omri warns his best friend against touching the cupboard. But by the time he gets back, Patrick has already brought the plastic cowboy to life. This cowboy introduces himself as Boone from 1879, but he tears up upon seeing the giant kids. Patrick decides to leave for now, but he convinces Omri to bring the tiny men to school the next day. Shortly after, Boone spots Little Bear and intends to shoot him, perceiving him as a threat. But Omri quickly intervenes and puts him in a drawer. Unfortunately, the next morning, he wakes up to find Little Bear and Boone engaged in a shootout. Take that, take that. Pew, pew, man. The boy immediately gets up and stops them from fighting. Later on, he takes the two tiny men to school by placing them inside a fanny pack. While inside, the two of them introduce each other and start conversing. No matter what side you're on, the fanny pack humbles all. They soon bond over their memories of the rivers and terrain they used to travel along. Little Bear reveals how his wife died due to chicken pox, bringing Boone to tears. While Omri goes in front of the class for a presentation, Patrick holds the fanny pack. During a class break, Patrick decides to show the tiny men to some classmates, but Omri stops him just in time, reminding him of the secret. Patrick asserts that he can show his toys to anybody he likes, but Omri claims that they are real humans, not toys. Their argument draws the teacher's attention, who then asks Patrick to show what's in the fanny pack. Omri yells that they're just plastic toys, which the tiny men hear. As a result, they act like plastic figurines as Patrick takes them out, successfully fooling the teacher. In the aftermath, the two friends reconcile and decide to sleep over at Omri's place. They then steal an Indian tribal girl from the school, intending to make her Little Bear's wife. Once they arrive home, Omri presents the Indian girl figurine to Little Bear, saying that she'll be his wife. Getting your toys laid is every child's dream. But just when he proceeds to transform it, he realizes that the cupboard is missing. Suspecting his brother's involvement, he dashes to Gillen's room and demands to know where it is. After arguing for a while, Gillen reveals that he has hidden it in the crawl space. Omri runs downstairs and retrieves the cupboard, but he doesn't find the key. He again goes to his brother's room to ask him about it, but Gillen is completely oblivious. Without the key, the cupboard is no longer functional. Later at night, Omri and Patrick, along with Little Bear and Boone, watch a TV program. It shows the merciless slaughter of Apaches by cowboys. Oh boy. Boone is delighted at the sight of his boys killing the helpless Native Americans, while Little Bear is is horrified by the portrayal of his people's suffering. Boone becomes so excited that he fires his gun into the air with delight. This startles Little Bear, who then shoots an arrow into Boone's chest, knocking him unconscious. Now, they're helpless as they can't do anything without the cupboard's key. To make matters worse, Omri's mother warns that Gillen's pet rat has escaped and is hidden somewhere under the wooden floorboards. Realizing that the rat is a great threat to the tiny men, the two best friends decide to take turns keeping watch throughout the night. At midnight, Omri, hears the rat beneath him and wakes up Patrick. As they look beneath the wooden floor, they discover the cupboard's key stuck between two floorboards. They try to retrieve it, but accidentally push it further down and out of sight. Seeing this, Little Bear volunteers to go under the floorboards to retrieve it. He's soon ambushed by the pet rat, and an intense chase follows. But he somehow manages to come out with the golden key. With the key finally recovered, Omri brings Tommy back and has him treat Boone's wound. During this, he has a sudden realization. It's time to 
return the tiny men back to their respective eras. Omri patiently waits for Tommy to finish his work and then sends him back to his time. Shortly after, Boone regains his consciousness and apologizes to Little Bear, saying that he's ashamed of what his people have done to the latter's tribesmen. Afterwards, as Patrick falls asleep, Omri goes to bring a female Native American toy to life. However, Little Bear sees this and stops him, saying that she probably has a family of her own and forcing her to be with him would be cruel. The next morning, Omri and Patrick say their goodbyes to their little friends. Before departing, Little Bear tells Omri that if he was one of his people, he would accept him as his nephew. As he goes on speaking, the boy visualizes himself as a life-sized version of Little Bear, who accepts him into his tribe. Following this, the two tiny men bid farewell to one another and assume their positions before Omri locks the cupboard. The movie ends with Omri reading his story regarding Little Bear in front of the class. Though unsure of Little Bear's fate, he assumes that the tiny man found a new wife and had lots of children.